Please be seated. Um, before I share the word of God, <coughs> I'd like to sing a song. Auntie, just before the service said, Nalla Pandang Antanga. So, I switch a Mari Aichi. Then, of course, we have uh, Sam. So, that gave me an added <laughs> inspiration. <coughs> we all know that uh, Psalm 42 is a very, very, very famous one. As the deer panted for the water. Mahananadu. நீரோடைய வாஞ்சிப்பது போல என்னுடைய ஆத்மா ஆண்டவரை வாஞ்சிக்கிறது நத திங் அபவுட் திஸ் பியூட்டிஃபுல் சாம் இஸ் தட் த சாம் இஸ் ப்ராஃபசி அபவுட் சுனாமி ஹவு ஹீ சஃபர்ட் வென் த வேவ்ஸ் கேம் ஓவர் ஹிம் அண்ட் பிகாஸ் ஆஃப் இஸ் டென்ஷன் அண்ட் ஹெட் ஏக் ஈவன் த சவுண்ட் ஆஃப் த வாட்டர் ஃபால்ஸ் but louder and disturbed him this is my own composition in tamil g major in between i go into e minor also ah, okay mananathu neerodai kai engi தவிப்பது போல் என் மனமானது இறைவனுக்காய் ஏங்கியே தவிக்கின்றது மானது நீரோடைக்காய் ஏங்கி தவிப்பது போல் என் மனமானது இறைவனுக்காய் ஏங்கியே தவிக்கின்றது மானானது நீரோடை காய் இறைவனை காண நான் தவிக்கின்றேன் மைக்காமல் பார்த்திட துடிக்கின்றேன் இறைவனை காண நான் தவிக்கின்றேன் இமைக்காமல் பார்த்திட துடிக்கின்றேன் இறைவா எனக்கு பதில் இல்லையோ இறைவா எனக்கு பதில் இல்லையோ என் கண்ணீர் எனக்கு உணவானதே இறைவனெங்கே 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 உன் இறைவனெங்கே என்னை எதிர்ப்பவர் கேட்டதால் மனம் பதைத்தேன் மானானது நீரோடை காய் ஆழ்கடல் ஆழ்கடலை இழுக்கின்றதே அலையாவும் என் மீது புரள்கின்றதே ஆழ்கடல் ஆழ்கடலை இழுக்கின்றதே அலையாவும் என் மீது புரள்கின்றதே அருவி இடியாய் முழங்கிடுதே அருவி இடியாய் முழங்கிடுதே ஆனாலும் அவர் அன்பு பொழிகின்றதே இனி கலக்கம் எனக்கு இல்லை இனி கலக்கம் எனக்கு இல்லை இறைவனுக்காய் தினம் காத்திருப்பேன் மானானது நீரோடை காய் வாங்கி தவிப்பது போல் என் மனமானது 
இறைவனுக்காய் ஏங்கியே தவிக்கின்றது மானானது தேங்க்யூ சார் today we are going to meditate on another claim of jesus christ i am the wine actually there is a small mistake in the in the program sheet it said i am the wine i am not talking about wine i am going to talk about wine v i n e <coughs> can i have the picture வரலையா ஓ ஓகே 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 நவ் வி நோ தட் இஸ்ரேல் இஸ் நோன் ஃபார் இஸ் லார்ஜ் வினியார்ட்ஸ் அண்ட் ஏக்கர்ஸ் அண்ட் ஏக்கர்ஸ் ஆஃப் வினியார் அண்ட் ஐ டோ நோ ஹவு மெனி ஆஃப் யூ ஹாவ் பீன் டு த ஹோலி லேண்ட் இட்ஸ் ரியலி அ ஜாய் டி சி த வைன் பிளான் அண்ட் த பிரான்சஸ் I still remember when I went to the Lazarus house, Mary and Martha, Lazarus. And in front, they have a big uh, pandal. And there we have Koshyang. <laughs> He's saying, yes, yes, I've seen that. And the, uh, the main plant will be a solid one. Okay? I think it's not coming up here. The solid one. And the branches... go a long way no it creeps into different uh, directions and there will be many branches now we all know that israel is known for wine particularly even if you go to the village at kena even today they manufacture very good wine now god used this vineyard as an imagery to describe his relationship with the israel so the theme i am the wine true wine it really talks about our relationship with jesus christ so the main question is that what sort of relationship we have with jesus christ how close we have come to jesus christ see the whole christian life the strength of our christian life depends on our relationship with jesus christ unless we have a close relationship with jesus christ we cannot lead a witnessful life i was really amazed to hear about one testimony um it's about uh, the gideon's bible and wherever they go they share this testimony with them. and i am really thrilled to share it with you <clears throat> in bombay there's a school run by a hindu he was a very strong fundamental uh, fundamentalist in hindu religion so when the gideons international approach the owner of the school to get permission to distribute bibles he openly said no we will not allow it so they came back and after some time he himself called them so they were really amazed how come the person who angrily rejected our request now calling us so when they went there he related an experience he said <clears throat> ayya i had a very bad experience after that i came to know that jesus is a real god once i sent two of my staff to get the cash from the bank to be distributed as a salary it was for the teachers and the working staff so the two clerical staff of my school went there got the money put it in a suitcase and they were bringing it 
now as they got down from the auto each one thought the other person will carry the suitcase and left the suitcase in the auto and the auto went off and i was angry with those people and they didn't know what to do i didn't know what to do because they haven't noted down the number of the auto rickshaw uh, so we didn't know we uh, we thought we lost the money but soon the auto driver came he brought the auto and he brought the suitcase and gave it to me i was really amazed and asked him what made him to bring the suitcase back because it has more than 1 lakh so he was really shocked to see the auto driver bringing back the suitcase then the auto driver told him sir i was like any other person but one day in the school where my daughter studies they distributed bibles and they gave a small uh, blue colored bible and i used to read it whenever i had time i read it then i found that jesus is a real god so i accepted him and have taken back to some so when i saw the suitcase i know that jesus wants me to return this suitcase even though it had so much money it was jesus that made me not to take that money so i am bringing this suitcase and giving it to you the owner was really shocked if that small new testament could change a person he first said there will there should be something in that little book so he called the international gideon international and asked them to distribute the bible now what i am trying to share with you from the testimony is that unless we have a close relationship with jesus christ we cannot lead a good christian life now what sort of relationship how close we are called to be with jesus that's what i am going to explain <clears throat> now we know no one in this world could be neutral to jesus christ someone said because of his claim either people should accept it or say he is a madman because he claims that he is god yeah many people think how can a human being claim to be a god so either people ignore him or reject him hate him or accept him now in the christian community i see two kinds of people one they accept jesus christ but they keep jesus at a distance they don't come to the church they don't thank god for all the things that they have received from the hands of god but i have also found people in the church who are very close to jesus christ the spiritual life is very strong in the personal life they lead a witnessful life of course there are some people who pretend to be very spiritual but in fact they don't lead a spiritual life if you go to the office they will tell what kind of person he is so unless you have close relationship with, with jesus christ you cannot lead a good christian life now jesus uses this imagery i am the vine the main stem and you are the branches okay my father is the gardener or the owner of the vineyard now this is not the first time jesus using this imagery in the old testament we find the same imagery imagery used time and again in israel <clears throat> they have 
acres and acres of land and they will have vineyard in different places. Sometimes they use the hills side also to have vineyard. Now, they definitely level the ground, remove the stones, plow it, water it, and they plant vineyard. And it doesn't stop with that. They have to take very, uh, they have to take care of it very much. Because many a time, the wild beast animals, like boars, they enter foxes, they enter into the vineyard, and they dig the ground and spoil the plants. So we have to be, they have to be very, very careful. They normally have a fence, and they will also have a watchtower. There will be always a person, watchman. He will see the animals far away or thieves, and he will inform the servants. Immediately they will try to protect the vineyard. And in that way, the owner will, will take care of the vineyard. Now pruning, pruning is, uh, <clears throat> as we see, not all the branches will bear fruit. Okay? So if the owner or the gardener finds that a particular branch is not bearing fruit, he will cut it off. It will cut it off. And with regard to the fruit-bearing branches, he will clean it. That is, he will take away the old dry leaves. If there is any twig that got dried, he will cut it off. No, those who are interested in gardening will know what I am talking about. Okay? Those who have green fingers, those who are interested in plants will know how we take care of the plants. <clears throat> now, now the harvesting will be in August or September. Okay, this is with regard to the uh, vineyard in Israel. And in the Old Testament, we have different passages. Moses, can we have the passages? The main passages are two. Isaiah, the yeah, previous one, pa. Isaiah chapter 5, 1 to 7. And Psalm 80, 8 to 16. And there are other verses also. Let me share what is there in Isaiah chapter 5, and Psalm 80. There we see God saying, I have brought a vine from Egypt and I've selected a place, the promised land. I planted it, that is Israel. I took care of it. I did everything for it. But when I went there for harvesting, when I plucked the grapes and ate it, it was terribly sore. I couldn't eat it. Then finally, in Isaiah, he says, if this continues, I'm going to destroy this vineyard and give the place to someone else. Yes, we see the same strict dealing of Jesus Christ, our God, with his own vineyard. And with regard to Jesus, this is what we see. God says, I have planted a vine, that is Jesus Christ. Now, it has many branches, that is the disciples. If some disciples, that is some branches, if it doesn't bear fruit, I will straight away remove it. Then, if I find a fruit-bearing branch, I will tend to it. I will take care of it. And remove all the unwanted things so that that branch will give best fruit. Now you have to remember number th Numbers 13, chapter 13. There, when Moses sent some people to 
find out about the promised land, they went and brought one bunch of grapes carried by two people. They put a stick and they carried the one bunch of grapes by two people. So such a heavy one. So such was the fertile land that God was giving to Israel. Now, the same thing is reflected in the parables of Jesus Christ. We have five parables, all related to the vineyard. I've given the list here in the notes. The parable of the laborers of the vineyard, the parable of the new wine and uh, in the old wine skin, the parable of two sons who said, one person said, he will not take care of it his father's vineyard but he repented and went and worked. One person said, one son said, I will do it but he didn't do it. Okay. Now, there is one more parable, parable of the rebellion tenants. God owns the vineyard, he leases out to some people but when the owner wanted to get the yield, they killed the servants, finally killed the son also. So, and there is one more beautiful parable that Jesus said. He, the owner has a vineyard. In that vineyard, he plants one fig tree. And when he comes again and again and sees, the fig tree was not bearing fruit. So the owner said, cut it off. But the gardener says, no master, let it be for one more year. I will do everything for it. Let's give some time. If it bears fruit next year, okay, we will have it. Otherwise, you can cut it off. Now the same thing is, same lesson is told by Jesus Christ when he cursed the fig tree. See, on Sunday, <clears throat> This is the sequence of event. On Sunday, Jesus goes to the temple, drives away people. Okay, you all know that. Then he, go back to, he goes back to uh, Bethany and stays overnight. Then he comes early in the morning. And Martha and Mary, they were very tired participating in the procession. So they didn't get up early and make the breakfast. So Jesus and disciples leaves the house early without breakfast they were hungry and they saw a fig tree Jesus saw it because it had many leaves Jesus thought it will bear it, there will be some fruit but St. Mark makes a point that was not the season that was not the season then why did Jesus expect uh, fruit in the fig tree because the fig trees in Israel as they bring out leaves they will also bring out flowers and the buds will come as the tender leaves come so when the tree is full of leaves that implies there will be fruits so when Jesus came and saw there was no fruit, he cursed the tree. And it started withering. The leaves started drooping. Then they go to Jerusalem, comes back, and the next day they come to the same, they go in the same way, and the disciples point out, Jesus, you cursed the tree yesterday, now it's dry up to the root, root level. So Jesus tells them about a few lessons. The main lesson is that we call it enacted parable. That is, it's a parable in enacted way. That is, that fig tree are the Israel or the people of God. Or you can think of you and me. Now, 
we have a list of things with regard to the vineyard as well as with regard to the fig tree. Uh, Moses, can we have that God selection A, B, C, D, E? Yeah, go before that. Yeah, before that. Yeah, God selection. So you just see the. Oh, okay, it's clear here. First, we have God's selection. God has selected us. God has selected Israelites. Then he planted the vineyard. He brought it from Egypt. Then God takes care of it. He takes care of us too. Then see, God expects something from us. When God has created us, he expects something from us. God has a plan for us. He wants us to worship him. He, he wants us to come close to him and lead a closer relationship with him. Now, D, but many a time, God is disappointed with many people. They do not bear fruit. They do not do what God expects from them. They don't lead a life that is pleasing in the sight of God. So many a time, God is disappointed with many people. Then, when God is disappointed, He also judges. He passes judgment on people. As we had seen in the parable of the fig tree, as we had seen in the enacted parable of Jesus cursing the fig tree, we know that our God is angry with the people who do not bear fruit, who pretend to bear fruit. Now, the only solution that we have is that to recognize that God as the gardener, God the Father who created us, and Jesus Christ is the true wine, and we are the branches, how close we have to be with Jesus? As close as the branch is connected with the main stem. Now, the best imagery that Jesus gives with regard to the how close we can be with Jesus is that friends. He gives that imagery in the John chapter 15. I don't want to call you as servants. They don't think of you as servant, I as a master. Actually, the Israelites thought of God as a master. Many a time they said, we cannot talk to God. That's why when Jesus said, God is our father, they got angry with Jesus Christ. How can you say God is your father? No. He is a great master. You cannot approach him. But Jesus said, I am a friend with you. You are my friends. The greatest love that one can show is to give one's life for a friend. Now, I would like to just close with this challenge question. How close you are with Jesus Christ? I have found, personally I found, to have relationship with Jesus as you have relationship with your friend. That is the best relationship that I would say. Yes, he is our master, he is our savior. At the same time, he comes down to our level. You can talk to him, talk to him as you talk to your friend. You don't need a flowery language, grammatically correct way of speaking. No. As a child talks to the father, as a friend talks to his friend, you can talk to God. Because he himself has said, he is our friend and he will help us. Let's close our eyes. Lord, by giving this imagery of 
vine and branches. Lord, help us to have such close relationship with you, O oh Lord. Help us always to have you so close to us that we can share everything with you. Not only just our burdens, not only just our needs. Lord, help us to converse with you as we talk to your friend. Yes, Lord, you have come down to our level. You yourself said, you are my friends. I no longer call you servants. You're calling us friends, O oh Lord. Help us to have this close relationship with you so that when we abide in you, when you abide in us, we will definitely bear fruit. We will definitely do good works. We will definitely speak good words. We will definitely share all your blessings with other people. Our time, our talent, our treasure, everything, O oh Lord. Help us to come close to you. You are always with us. You are our friend. Help us to hold on to you as our dear friend and experience your presence always and everywhere. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.